Welcome boys and girls to Grammy's Corner Club. I'm so glad you're here today. You see, I have a visitor with me today and she wanted to meet you boys and girls. Um, tell them what your name is. My name is Sunny. Sunny? Is that because you're such a sunshiny girl? I think so. I'm happy to be here. You're happy to be here. Why don't you say hi to the boys and girls? They're watching you. Hi, boys and girls. Where are they? I can't see them. Well, you know what? Grammy has a magic kaleidoscope. And I look in my magic kaleidoscope and I see who is here. When I take and I look in there, I see boys and girls. Would you like to look in there, Sunny, and see if you can see any anybody? Was that scary? Uh -huh. Why was it scary? There was a lot of strangers in there. Strangers? My mom says not to talk to strangers. Well, you know what? Let's make friends so they won't be strangers anymore. Would you like that? Yeah, I like to make friends. All right. We're going to do this, boys and girls. Instead of Grammy looking in the magic kaleidoscope and seeing who's here, how about you all introduce yourselves to Sunny and let's make friends today. So I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. And when I get to three, say your names really loud so that Sunny hears you. We hear everybody that's here. All right, here we go. One, two, girls were really loud. They hurt my ears. They hurt your ears? <laughs> yes, they were kind of loud. But you know what? There's lots of boys and girls joining us today. And now you have lots of new friends, new people to meet. Yay! I like that. Yes, now you have more people to play with. This is going to be fun. We're going to sing some songs today. And we're going to play some games and even have maybe some jokes. Jokes? I have some knock-knock jokes. Can I tell you my knock-knock jokes? Mm, I guess. You want to tell us your knock-knock jokes? Okay, go ahead, Sonny. Knock-knock. Who's there? Annie. Annie? Annie who? Can you stand just one more knock knock joke? Okay, go ahead, Sunny. Knock knock. Who's there? Amos. Amos who? A mosquito bit me. <laughs> oh, a mosquito bit you. I don't think we have mosquitoes in here. Well, you are funny. We are going to sing a song now. So Sunny, how about you take a seat and you can sing along with the boys and girls. Would you like to join us today? Yes. All right, you have a seat over here. Thank you. Oh, well, that was nice to make a new friend, wasn't it? And that's what you do, boys and girls. If you want to make a new friend, don't be afraid, don't be shy. Go up and tell them your name and introduce yourself. And just like that, you can make a new friend. So today we're going to sing a new song. Actually, you may already know this, but I'm going to change it up just a little bit and I'm calling it The Wise Kid. You know the song about the wise man? Well, this one is The Wise Kid. And it doesn't mean a smart aleck either. It means that you're a wise kid when you make wise choices. For example, if mom or dad tell you to do something and you obey them and you do what they say, that's making a wise choice. You're a wise kid. Or 
If you tell the truth instead of telling a lie, you just made a good choice and you're a wise kid. So we're gonna sing about the wise kid and he builds his house upon a rock because you know what? A rock is a good, firm foundation. It's not gonna fall. So let's do this, ready? The wise kid built his house upon a rock. The wise kid built his house upon a rock. The wise kid built his house upon a rock. And the rains came a-tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. And the house on the rock stood firm. Now, there's the kid that's not so wise and he's acting a bit foolish today. So this is foolish. The foolish kid built his house on, not a rock, but on the sand. And you know what's gonna happen when the rain comes down? Splat. <laughs> okay, let's try it. The foolish kid built his house upon the sand. The foolish kid built his house upon the sand. The foolish kid built his house upon the sand. And the rains came a-tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. And the house on the sand went splat. Sure did. Now, if we all want to be wise, we're going to build our lives on the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. So build your life on the Lord. That's the way to be a wise kid. All right, well, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Now, I have a super fun game for us to play. We haven't played it for a while, and you can tell what it looks like. Hangman, right? Hangman, yes. So I'm going to give you a clue about what our word is today. It has six letters and five letters that you're going to have to figure out. Um, and don't hang the man, all right? So I brought the ABCs. I made up some ABC cards. And we're going to pick from these. And we're going to see if we can figure out what's going Now, the clue is this is going to be something that you would eat at the fair. Do you like to go to the fair and ride the rides? And there's something special that we all like to get when we go to the fair to eat, okay? So that is the clue of what the word is. All right, so we're gonna shuffle these up and we're going to pick a card, pick a card, pick a card, pick any card, all right. So the first card is a B. And that has six letters. Let me see, is it in the top? Eh. Is it in the bottom? Nah. Nope. There's no B. Oh my goodness. You know what happens when there's no B? We're gonna hang the man. We put a head on him, right? <laughs> There's his head. All right, let's draw another card. Any card, let's draw another card. Let's see what we get. You gonna help me? Let's draw a card. Okay, um, ooh, let's see. Is there an S on the top word? Yeah, nope. On the bottom word, ah, nope. Oh my goodness, our man is gonna get a Body! Oh dear, let's not hang the man. That is not what I want to do here. <laughs> All right, let's pick another letter. It's an N, you're right, an N. Okay, let's see if I have an N. Oh, I do. <gasps> Did some of you guess that? Yes. 
an N. Okay, let's go to the next letter, the next word. Oh, there is an N here. Okay, well now we're getting a we're getting some good clues here. Remember, this is something that you would buy to eat at the fair when you go to the fair. All right, this is something that we always like to go and get when we go to the fair. Hmm, let's mix these up again. Let's pick out a card, any card, any card. Okay. Oh, that's a blank card. That one was a nothing to that one. All right, let's see. T. Um, is there a T? Is there a T? Is oh, there is? Yep. Right. <laughs> You're right. Another T. Okay, let's go to the second word. No, there's no T's down there. Okay, so now we have two T's and two N's. Oh, some of you, I think, are saying, I think I know, I think I know. What do you get when you go to the fair that you just love? Okay, let's pick up another letter. What is this? M. M. Is there an M? No, not in the first word. M in the second word? Nope. No M. Oh dear. Our man gets a leg. Oh no. <laughs> Let's not hang the man today, okay? Let's not hang. Let's figure out what this word is. Okay, let's pick out another letter. Okay. What is that? K. K. Is there a K? Hmm. Looks like it could be kitten. Do you eat kittens? No. I don't think I get that at the fair. So I don't think that's what this word is. It could have worked there, but how about down here? Uh, nope. Oh no! Oh no! The man gets another leg! Ah! Please don't hang me, he says. Please don't hang me. It's okay, he still get he still gets some arms. Alright, let's pick another letter. Let's pick another letter here. Hmm, I'm not gonna peek. Da, 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 da. Okay. What is that? C. C. Is there a C? Does it go there? Yes, it does. You're right. C. Go there. There. No. There? <laughs> you are getting warm. Yes, you are. Some of you figure out what it is that you get when you go to the fair. I think I can hear some of you saying it. <laughs> Let's pick another letter. Um, e. Well, we haven't had any vowels yet. So let's see, is there an E? E go there? No. There? No. Here? There? No? No E's, okay. No E's, uh-oh. Ouch, the man gets an arm. Come on guys, let's get this going. Let's get this going. Let's see what we have here. Um, oh, what about this, a D? All right, let's look. No, definitely not gonna go there. Is it gonna fit there? No, nope, that doesn't make a word. That doesn't make a word. How about? ND, a D, yes, yes, you're right. The D can go right there. Do you know what it is? Have you figured it out? All right, let's let's pick let's pick another letter here. Pick another letter. Pick another letter. Okay. All right, we're getting warm here. All right, guys, does it fit there? Yes, yes, it does. Okay, does it fit there? Yes, 
It does. Oh wow, what does that word spell? I heard it, cotton, you're right, cotton. Cotton, do you eat cotton? I don't think I eat cotton, but there's another word that goes with it. Cotton, what do you buy at the fair? Cotton, what? Yes, I think I hear it, you're right. I know some of you, you got it. You're right, cotton candy. Cotton candy, you go to the fair. It's one of the things we don't make at home, but we go to the fair, we get cotton candy. Very good. Now I've got y'all wanting some cotton candy, right? Okay, that's one of those fun foods that we get when we go to the fair. Okay, well that was a lot of fun. And um, I have one more thing that I think you kids will like. How about a little quiz? Actually, they're fun facts. Things that you may or may not know. And I was reading where it said it's weird, but it's true. Yes, there are things that are weird but they're true. Do you want to hear something that's weird, but it's true? Okay. This is weird, but it's true. It is possible for people to get goosebumps on their faces. Did you know that? I didn't know that. It is possible for people to get goosebumps on your face. That is really weird. I did not know that. Okay, let's see if there's another weird but true fact here. This is really weird. Okay, I tried to figure this out, but it's true. It's true. You can look it up. Your eyes move about 80 times a second. Do you know how fast a second is? You say 1,001. That's a second. It says your eyes move about 80 times a second. Is that amazing? That's weird but true. Okay, this is weird but it's true. A cat has 32 muscles in each ear. Yeah, 32 muscles in each ear, cat. How many of you have a cat? Do you ever see their ears and they'll, and one ear go this way and the other ear go that way and they're listening and, and they're perking up their ears and you see their ears moving different directions? Yeah, kind of like a satellite. <laughs> All right, let's see. Another weird but true fact. It's true. It is impossible for most people to lick their elbow. That's weird but true. It's impossible for most people to lick their elbow. <laughs> you just tried it, didn't you? No, there's no way. There's no way I can lick my elbow, my tongue. Unless you, I guess you have a super long tongue. <laughs> no way I can get my, lick my elbow. If you can do that, please, will you write and tell me? I'd like to know who you are. And send me a picture. That would even be better. All right, one more weird but true fun fact. Did you know an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. <laughs> an ostrich, you know what an ostrich is, those big birds that stand up big and their little puny eyes, their eyes are bigger than their brain. Makes me wonder if they're uh, descended from the dodos, the dodo birds that went extinct. That is really funny. So those are a few weird fun facts that are true, they are actually true. Okay, so you have to remember to tell mom or dad some of those, that was pretty great. All right, so you know what time it is? It's story time. Yes, story time. And we are reading Jen Karen's book, Jeremy, The Tale of an Honest Bunny. Now, if you remember last week, we know that Jeremy made it to America and he took a nap. Where did he wind up going and who did he end up sleeping with? The owl, yes. Ooh, ooh. Remember he got inside that, 
the tree had a big opening and he got in there and ah, he was so tired and he was gonna take a nap. And then the owl said, Who? Who's there? <laughs> but he let he the owl let um, Jeremy take a nap, didn't he? Yeah. So now Jeremy has left that and he is going on looking for his new owner. Remember her name is Candace Freeland? And he's got to get to North Carolina. That is his destination in America. That's gonna be his new home. So he is on a journey to get to his new home, to get to his new owner. This chapter is called The Village Deer. After his nap, and a sincere thank you to Charles Benchley Owl, Jeremy left the snug tree behind. The rain had stopped and a glorious day spread before him. Somewhere in a meadow, he heard a sheep. Bah! Bah! Somewhere in a tree, he heard a squirrel. Have you ever heard a squirrel in a tree? They really click at you. <laughs> Somewhere in the clean air, he smelled fresh mown hay. His nose never stopped twitching. His feet never stopped hopping until he came to the garden. He peeked through the open gate and looked around curiously. A peach tree cast its shade upon the path. An old, old apple tree grew near a garden bench. A carpet of mown grass, glistening and perfect as a bolt of velvet, was unfurled on the garden floor. Near it was a chair with someone in it, someone who was fast, fast asleep. As Jeremy stood looking on, a book slipped out of the sleeping someone's hand and fell open in the grass. Can you see this where he's come up to someone sleeping in the chair? Eagerly, Jeremy hopped into the garden and paused in a shaft of late morning light. Oh my! said a small, rather old woman with lots of curls about her face. I must have nodded off. She was wearing a pair of stockings rolled below her knees and needlepoint slippers dusted with flour from a pie she had baked that morning. Excuse me, please, said Jeremy. Is this in North Carolina? Oh, indeed not, replied the small woman, indignant. It's Virginia. She leaned forward in her chair to peer down at him. My, but you're tall for your age, she said. But nonetheless, blue is certainly your most flattering color. Do you know there have been moles here all morning? They burrowed under my chair the live long day and not one has come forward with so much as a thank you, ma'am. In a huff, she moved from her chair to the bench. Moles are everlastingly ill-bred, and believe me, Mr. Pigs is furious about it. She had little round smudges of rouge on her cheeks and skin that appeared as fresh as a girl's. But let's not dwell on dark thoughts, she said. No, ma'am, agreed Jeremy. Come, sit beside me, and we'll take a nice drive in the country. She patted the bench and beckoned to her visitor who popped up beside her. You would like a nice drive in my carriage? Jeremy thought about this. But we... Don't have a horse. Oh, fiddle dee dee, indeed we do. Steady now, Natasha, she said to the morning air and took up the reins of her imaginary mare. Whoa, girl, there now, nice and easy. It's out of the gate and away we go. Suddenly, Jeremy thought his coattails might be flying. He thought his ears might be standing perpendicular to the carriage seat. He heard the wind rushing by as she called out, Over there is Captain Stewart's house where we had fancy balls every spring. And, and over there, do you see over there? He thought,
thought he certainly did. Yes, ma'am? Well, that's where we picked apples by the river and went on picnics every summer. Jeremy held onto the arm of the carriage for dear life, though the ride was so smooth as to be nearly motionless. Natasha must be picking up her feet very smartly. Oh, heavenly days, whooped his happy driver. These cool mornings make our little mare fly. Young man, you must give her an apple when we return home. Just then, a kind looking gentleman appeared alongside them. Oh, morning, ma'am. You out for your drive, are you? Woo, Natasha, yes, Mr. Pigs. And we need apples right away. Mr. Pigs pulled three apples from his sweater pocket and handed one to his mistress and one to her guest. They all bit right in and began to chew contentedly. Uh, this lovely young gentleman is riding out with me this morning. Well, we don't get many rabbits, said Mr. Pigs, peering at Jeremy on the garden bench. Jeremy somehow knew the ride was over, as his driver seemed to have forgotten all about it. Squirrels, we do get squirrels. Animals, said his mistress. Oh, yes, indeed, moles by the dozens. Put Nat Natasha in the barn, Mr. Pigs, and I'll pour up some lemonade. The small woman with the flower on her shoes trotted along the path and disappeared into the large white house. Who is that lady? asked Jeremy. Oh, that's the village dear she is. The village dear? Yes, indeed. The people here love her, for she's kind and makes them happy. And so they call her the village deer, you see? Mr. Pigs bit into his apple and chewed noisily. I've been gardening here since she was a little young'un, nearly 75 years. She likes her flowers and her fruit trees and, and all, and I like to keep them for her. And so we get along just right, we do. Could you tell me how to find North Carolina? Jeremy inquired. Why, sure, young fella. But first, I got to put this mare in the barn, or she'll give me what for she will. Mr. Pigs led Natasha out of the garden and through the gate, not caring at all that she was invisible. Jeremy looked down at the book that lay open on the grass and his gaze fell upon these words. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. That was what Lydia had written on the paper he carried over his heart. There were lots of other words on the page, which was marked Psalm 91. But before he could read them, Village Deer returned with a tray containing a pitcher of lemonade and three small glasses. Where are you off to, young man? You're mighty dandied up. I'm off to my new home in North Carolina. Oh, I couldn't bear to live any place but Virginia, she said wistfully, forgetting to pour the lemonade. It's where I met Captain Stewart, you see. I'm going to like North Carolina, he said. I'm going to belong to Candace. Uh, did you say can dance? I don't know if she can dance, said Jeremy who secretly hoped she could. I can dance, said Village Deer, who proceeded to stand on her tiptoes and twirl around twice before she crashed onto the cushion in her chair. Oh, oopsie daisy, she exclaimed. Mr. Pigs came up the path holding his hat in both hands. Looky what I've got here, he said. 
Village Deer peered into his hat and gasped. Then she giggled. <laughs> you got bunnies. Jeremy leaned over as far as he could to see for himself. Oh, just a while ago, Mr. Pigs remarked, I said, we don't get many rabbits. And now? Well, when it rains, it pours, exclaimed Village Deer. There they were, two little ones with long ears, asleep, and lying so close to one another they might have been one bunny with two tails. I found them in a stump behind the shed, Old Harry was barking and yapping, so I was afraid to leave him. Jeremy looked at the bunnies in astonishment. Well, he was glad he had never looked like that. Why, they had no vests with silver buttons, no jackets, no boots, nothing. Where's their mother? asked the village deer. Oh, Harry's run their mama off, is what I'd say. Dogs, they're mighty scornful of rabbits, you know? Mr. Pigs turned to Jeremy. What do you think we should do, young fella? Well, never in all his life had anyone asked him what to do about anything. Jeremy closed his eyes and he thought very, very hard. In his mind, he saw the old oak tree standing in the meadow in the sunshine. I know a perfect place for their home, he said happily. There aren't any dogs around, just squirrels and... He didn't think he should mention the owl. No, indeed. He didn't know how, but he would work it out with the owl one way or another even if he had to pay rent by giving over, what? His silver buttons. You come in handy, said Village Deer, and proceeded to drop off to sleep in her chair. Mr. Pigs picked up the book and gently laid it on the bench. Well, let's go along, he said to Jeremy. We'll take these youngins to your place and let's get them settled in. That's the end of that chapter, boys and girls. Wasn't that exciting? Well, you know what you gotta do. Come back next week and we'll continue reading and hopefully pretty soon, poor Jeremy is gonna find Candace and find his new home. Do you think he's gonna have to give away his silver buttons to the owl? I don't know. Come back next week and we'll find out. All right? Well, thank you, boys and girls, for coming to Grammy's Corner Club again. It was fun hanging out with you. See you next week.